All right, today I'm joined by my TA Serenity for this nozzle thermodynamics video. She herself is much more similar to a diffuser because even though she's being kind of active right now, she in generally becomes very slow and that's the purpose of a diffuser is to take something that comes in fast and slow it down. So the example problem I wanna to work today is instead a nozzle. Looking at the four main components of a thermal power plant, most of this course is just looking at energy, how much heat is coming in, how much work is going out. And we don't do too much analysis of what's actually happening inside each component. The nozzle is gonna be located at the entrance of the turbine, because if we wanna make a turbine spin, you can't do that with just hot steam alone. All hot steam would do would be warm up the turbine. In order to make it move, the steam has to have momentum. And that's what's actually causing the turbine to spin is it's gonna be an exchange of kinetic energy. The high velocity steam is going to physically impact the turbine blades. And that's what's gonna cause rotation due to a conservation of momentum. So the purpose of the nozzle is to convert this large amount of stored energy, which is stored in the form of temperature and pressure, which is enthalpy, and convert that into kinetic energy, which is gonna mean a higher velocity. So this nozzle problem is going to involve an energy rate balance, a mass rate balance, and the ideal gas law. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'll start off this problem like I start every problem, given, find, concept, and a drawing. And nozzles aren't really that hard to draw, so pretty sweet drawing. Givens is just all of the numbers you're provided at the beginning. Also include what substance it is. And I'm also including the implied givens. The keyword steady state implies that in the energy rate balance, the rate of change of energy in the control volume is zero. So DE DT is zero. And the well insulated nozzle means that the rate of change of heat transfer Q dot equals zero. Three things for find, a brief word description of what I'm trying to find, the actual variable I'm gonna use for that thing, and what units the answer is gonna be in. This problem is going to use these three concepts, energy rate balance, because that's why we were told it was in steady state so that we would know that DE DT is zero. I know this is going to involve the mass rate balance because we're looking for cross-sectional area. The only equation where that is going to occur is in the volumetric flow rate or mass flow rate equation through a pipe. And then lastly, ideal gas law, because we were told it was nitrogen, though we could treat nitrogen as an ideal gas. So Dead giveaway. Dead Charles, giveaway. Charles, thank you very Dead much. Dead giveaway. So if we want to find temperature first, it makes sense to start with the energy rate balance, because we'll be able to find temperature if we know enthalpy at the outlet. So I'm always going to start off with the full version of the energy rate balance equation, cross off the terms that are zero based on our givens, which is DE, DT, and heat transfer, Cross off work is zero because it's a nozzle and that's not what nozzles do. A nozzle's purpose is to convert temperature and pressure energy into velocity. It doesn't require work, it doesn't generate work. So I didn't need to be told that work was zero in the problem statement that was implied based on it being a nozzle. And lastly, I'm going to assume that potential energy is zero because nozzles are small. And even if we orient the nozzle directly up or down so that there would be a change in gravitational potential energy, that value would be extremely small compared to the temperature and pressure energy of enthalpy. Since there's only one inlet and one outlet in this problem, I can also cross off the mass flow rate terms since they'll be equal to each other. For enthalpy and nitrogen in my textbook, I'm gonna head back to table A-23. And again, in my textbook, this is the beige colored tables for SI units. Make sure you're not looking at the English units table for this problem in particular. And zooming in on nitrogen, I find 9888 kilojoules per kilomole. And while I'm back here in the tables, I know already that I'm gonna need another value because kilomole is definitely not part of a final answer. And in order to eliminate that, I'm gonna have to find the molar mass of nitrogen. And in my textbook, that's gonna be in table A-1, a value of 28.01 kilogram per kilomole. I can plug in the velocities and now I can plug in H1 and the molar mass. And whenever you use a value from a table, also write down which table it came from. You can also see that I had to do a small bit of extra unit analysis because the table gives values in kilojoules, but the kinetic energy term is just meters squared per second squared. There's no kilo in front of it. So in order for the units to cancel out, I need joules, not kilojoules. So that's that extra thousand term. A little bit of calculator work, 6683 kilojoules per kilomole, final enthalpy leaving the nozzle. So we're heading back to table 823 to find 6683 and to find what temperature this corresponds to. 
Now there's seemingly no way that 6683 is going to be exactly listed on the table, and that means we're going to have to interpolate to find temperature. But maybe if all you viewers out there just wish really, really hard, please no interpolation, please no interpolation, maybe we'll actually happen to find that number. So on the count of three, one, two, and there it is, exactly what we hoped for, 6683 listed exactly as the enthalpy, which means we can use 230 degrees and not have to interpolate. Good work. So that's one answer found, 230 Kelvin for the final temperature. Number looks kind of high, but remember Kelvin is off by 273 from Celsius, so this is actually like negative 40 degrees Celsius, so this is pretty cold. For the mass rate balance for a single inlet, single outlet, means mass flow rate one has to equal mass flow rate two. Mass flow rate is equal to volumetric flow rate divided by specific volume. And volumetric flow rate is cross-sectional area times velocity. So writing out the units, just to double check that this equation works, we've got kilograms per second on the left, and the right-hand side will also simplify out to kilograms per second. So that's a good sign. So I've plugged in the numbers that are known, circled in red what we're trying to find as a final answer, which means if I can find specific volume at state two, that's gonna get us to the end. So at the beginning, we were gonna have to use the ideal gas law. Yeah, give away. Yeah, give away. For thermodynamics, I always start with PV equals MRT as my preferred version of the ideal gas law equation, and then just tweak it as necessary for whatever I'm trying to find. And in this case, V over M is specific volume, so that's gonna equal RT over P. The universal gas constant for my textbook is found in the inside front cover, and this is listed as R bar with units of kilojoule per kilomole Kelvin. And again, whenever you see kilomole, this means you're also using molar mass to make the units work out. So since kilomoles in the denominator, I'm also gonna divide by molar mass to cancel out kilomole. So now the units on the right side are kilojoule per kilogram kilopascal. And I'm a little suspicious that that may or may not be the right units for specific volume. So let's reduce these to simpler units to make sure it actually kind of makes sense. Okay, and since there's a kilo in both the numerator and denominator, the thousand cancels, and the newtons also cancel, and we are left with meters cubed per kilogram. Plugging the values in gives a value a little above 42 square centimeters. And again, it's always a good idea to write out your units and be very careful to make sure everything cancels the way it's supposed to. It is immensely easy to make unit mistakes on these problems. You have to write out your units every step along the way. If you learned something today and think that other students would also benefit from watching, please hit the thumbs up so this video will appear higher in search and make it easier for other students like you to find. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.